Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together with a big, big round of applause. Uh, it's an evening session. Come, thank you. Thank you for that very well introduction. Now, I know on the last presentation of the day, and there may be some, uh, you know, very tired people here. I know myself a little bit that I still in New York time, but I'm going to do my best to keep you entertained and uh, get through this all right. Innovation in medicine is, is something that is used awfully, but one of the things we haven't seen in a long time is a vertical leap. We've seen many horizontal leaps over the past century or so since penicillin came along in the advent of technology. But the one thing we haven't seen yet is a vertical leap. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, is taking that vertical leap in medicine, really getting into a new century, a new paradigm. I'd like you to picture this. You go into a doctor's office for the first time, and maybe you refer to the doctor of with allergies, or maybe you have a serious condition, diabetes, Parkinsonism, you see the doctor, you go in and uh, he sees you right away. He takes his time to get to know you. He sits down with you. He asks you many questions. He bonds with you. He builds a relationship with you. He goes to the street physical about 30 to 45 minutes with the doctor now. And then at the very end, he takes just one drop of blood, one little prick on the finger, puts it on the microscope slides and says, thank you very much, I'm excuse me. The very next day, he asks you to come back in. And you think, oh boy, must be something wrong if I'm coming in so early. But he sits you down and he says, I have all your results ready. And he gives you these results. And they're not the normal results you're used to. They're not your cholesterol levels. They're not your different biochemical analysis lab tests. He sits down with you and he says, I have a series of results here that really show why you have diabetes, why you have this, whether it's something of a pathogen, whether it's nutritional uh, deficiencies, whether it's electromagnetic stress, whether your own phone that you carry on you is really impacting. Emotional stress, stress at work. You know, well, how does he even possible? How does he know this happening? But he tells you all these things, and then you're listening, maybe skeptical, maybe not. And then he says, okay, you know what else I have for you? And he slides over a program of treatment. And this program of treatment is completely specified, tailored, and personalized to you. No other treatment program would be like this. Even if you have diabetes, even if you have Parkinson's, this is a treatment program that is for you, a personalized treatment program. And you have this in front of you, and you start preparing your day. And this encompasses all types of medicines. We're not just talking about conventional medicine, which is included, which is actually very important. We're talking about alternative. We're talking about therapy. We're talking about lifestyle, nutrition. We're talking about even uh, spiritual things. Anything possible that can improve your state of being and get you to a healthy state as quickly as possible is given to you right then and there. The very next day after you just saw this out there. And you can start your treatment right after. And normally these treatments don't take too long, even if you are in a chronic condition. Now, if I told you this, you'd probably think that this is something of the far future. Maybe in 10, 15 years, we'll be able to get there. But the truth is, this is happening right now. And these are the types of innovations and opportunities we have in the medical field. And it's something close to my heart, because over 10 years ago, I started a company called Innovative Medicine. And this has been our goal for the last 10 years, to get to this place where we are now, where this is a possibility, this is a reality happening right now. You know, when I started the company 10 years ago, I had to ask myself a series of questions before I actually got into it to make sure I was making the right move. And there's a great book and a TED talk by Science Science that says, you should start with why. If you can explain why you're doing so, why you're starting a company, why you're doing, you have this idea, and it captivates an audience, and you agree with it, you can go from there, and the rest is easier. The rest of it comes naturally. So I started with why, and I realized that medicine was at the crossroads. I've been around medicine my whole life. I 
father was a conventional doctor, anesthesiologist, chief of pain services, surgeon. My mother's psychologist. I knew doctors growing up all the time. And I did see that there were limitations to medicine. I see even today my friends that are younger and still on a downward path of that cycle of more prescription drugs, etc. And the numbers don't lie. If you look at these numbers, nearly one in two people are chronically ill in the US today. Two point two trillion dollars are currently being spent on healthcare expenses just in the USA. That's sixteen percent, that's rising every year. That's going up and up. And then cancer is expected to surge fifty percent seven percent in the next twenty years. Something that the World Health Organization has called an imminent disaster that requires a new focus on prevention. And by prevention, they really mean prevention, not early detection in this case. And that's hard to do right now. These numbers simply say that we are in a growth rate that is unsustainable. If we don't do something now, we may not be here. We will suffer because of this. The time is now to do something. So when I went through that why, it gave me a very clear answer to say, okay, the why is there. Now we have, now we can move on. So we move on to the how, that comes next. Where we stand right now in medicine, we have a diagnosis and then a generalized protocol, and usually it is trial and error check. You have hypertension, we see that from your blood analysis. We put you on one kind of anti-hypertensive, and we see how it goes. If things don't start to come down a little bit, we put you on a higher dosage or a different one. But it is a guess and check approach. Even as Dr. Budapaja said, the studies themselves sometimes aren't exactly that truthful. <laughs> so in this day and age, this has become an obsolete way of going about medicine. And the reason for that is we are so unique. We know this. We are like our fingerprints. Each one of us in this room has a different fingerprint. So shouldn't we have a different program of treatment? Shouldn't our way to get back to health be just as unique as this fingerprint? The reasons for this type of approach that we need now more than ever is because we have more factors involved in our life. Back in the day, this one was an amazing discovery because it was just for a bacteria. We had a bacteria, that was it, that was the only thing that affected you. Penicillin did a wonderful job. And for acute things, it was wonderful. But now when you think about it, we have so many different diseases, so many chemicals in our foods, chemicals in the air, more stresses, electromagnetic everywhere flowing through us, affecting our DNA, affecting how we function. There are just too many factors for us to say, well, this is the protocol for you. It doesn't work that way. And the fact is, the factors are on those three levels. We've heard it a lot today. Body, mind, spirit. You cannot separate the three. These are who we are as human beings. We like to look at the body because that's the physical one we see. That's, that's the one that comes out with the symptoms. But we cannot separate that from the mind, which is the psycho-emotional, which Ben said is the P-N-E-I. It's a whole system in science that shows our mind, our thoughts, affect our physiology. And then the spirit, which now quantum physics knows is information and consciousness. And quantum physicists have shown this over and over, that there is, the, at the deepest level, it's the information that starts everything. Think about DNA, with DNA is just information. So when you look at it from this perspective, we, we have to go towards more of a personalized approach. And that leads into, OK, well, what's the next path? How do we personalize? Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk right now in uh, pharmacogenetics and mapping your genes and finding the right pharmaceutical drugs that can do it. It's still a tricky game because you're still dealing with drugs that affect the body in different ways. You're trying to mix and match. You know, but we do have this option of using this new science, quantum. And in this quantum science, we can find out much, much more information than we have right now. Using quantum principles, we can actually run a mass compatibility system on each individual patient that looks something like this. The patient comes in, you can see all the different types of biological medicine, which is alternative, really, you could say. 
conventional energy, <laughs> the other two could be spiritual, nutrition, uh, everything. And all this forest is going to have all these, you know, I have anything, you have anything in here, procedures, nutrition. This is just a small block of it. But what we're doing by using these quantum principles is basically matching compatibility to the patient. What is the best therapy for you? What is the best nutrient for you? How much of it do you need? And you're getting very specific to the very end, energy panels, two treatments, one times a week, OS Oxio Forte, which is a very unique product, two tablets, two times a day. And that's you. That's no one else's. That's just for you. So when you have that level of personalization specificity, it, it really does a lot. It changes the whole game. It's no longer guessing, shacking. Let's see how it goes. It's saying, no, this is yours. This is your personal roadmap to health. We're going to give it to you. We're going to get you healthy if you bother. So as you see, each individual will see that unique that addresses all the root causes. As Tony has said before, this isn't about symptom management. This is about getting to the root cause and allowing the body to self-heal and get itself back to managing. That should be a doctor's main objective. Not to manage symptoms over a lifetime to get the patient to a place where they can manage themselves and become healthier <laughs> and stay healthy. There's another big factor to this in what we talked about when we talked about integrated medicine, and that's unification. You know, Albert Einstein, for the last 30 years of his life, dedicated his life to unified field theory. A lot of people thought he was wasting his time because in his first 20 or so years, so many things were coming out. He goes out to square, all these different things. And he was revolutionizing quantum physics as we know it. But then his last 30 years, he dedicated to trying to find a unified field there. And he failed. And a lot of people thought he wasted those years. But in his mind, that was the most important thing. If we can't unify all these things, it doesn't mean much. And he even stated it. We're standing in front of a closed box which we cannot open, and we try hard to discover about what is in, what is and is not in it. And I believe that's where we are with medicine right now. We have so many things in front of us around the world. We've heard so many great things on sound, on spiritual, yoga, fasting, all these things, conventional. And they're sitting in this box, and it's closed in front of these doctors. We're not quite sure what to do with it. It's closed in like ice that we're trying to find out. But what medicine is none of these conventional modern medicine. Instead of trying to unlock it, unlock and see the keys, they've taken an axe and smashed it. And smashed it into pieces of specializations. So what we have today is a box that's broken up in many different pieces. And you have your Castro Benton, neurologist over on one side, neurologist, got a child of the psychopathy, all these different things. And we focus in on these. And we look at it and separate the body and start to separate all these little pieces, all these specialists sending one patient. And I think maybe it's neurological, go to the neurologist. Uh, it could be cancer, go to the oncologist. So we did the opposite of what Einstein was so, so looking to unite that we went the opposite route of unification right now in medicine. So it's very important that we start to unify. One of the first things we can do is start to understand what's around the globe. A lot of times in medicine, we look at just what's in our area. You know, in the U.S., rarely do doctors ever leave the U.S. to get trained. I remember my father, when he was younger, he was very disillusioned with becoming a surgeon and seeing that there was something more to help his patients. He, he saw they were coming back to sick and said, there's got to be something more in medicine. I got into medicine to help people. That was my Hippocratic hope. And yet they're coming back worse after I did spinal epidurals and back surgeries. And so there had to be something more. He started to travel the world. He started to figure out things. He, he didn't even believe in alternative medicine 30 years ago. He was a conventional doctor. Prescription surgery, that was it. And he did very well that way. But he realized that this isn't working frustration of the doctor to, to try and do better for someone. So he began to travel the world, and he looked out for all these therapies, and he tried to launch find things down in South America, uh, very advanced laser systems and pulse electromagnetic field systems coming out of the UK and Spain. You know, and he went around, and that's what I mean by unification. It's not just unifying what is what you know around you. You have to build the biggest field of awareness of what is out there. 
then you have to make the decision of, of what is viable. In his mind, he spent 20 years trying it on patients. If it worked, he would keep it in his toolbox. If it didn't run a number, he would. But he did incorporate a global, and in this day and age, it's very easy, as you can see, we can fly into New Delhi, or New York right now, we'll fly back to New York very quickly, be there right now. You can pull these things all from all over the world, which is necessary. Because we are all humans, and there's so much innovation, and so many great opportunities around the world, we have to look at all of them. Also, unification, we have to understand what is how there are the different aspects of medicine are. If we were to look at this is a full spectrum, we call it, of medicine. It's, it's encompassing basically 100% medicine. And when we look at what's currently going on. In conventional medicine, great job. Great job and acute, great job using physical modalities and basic procedures like surgery, which is done miracles for people who have broken legs. And pharmaceutical drugs, which are great in acute cases where the body just can't compensate. They need something. You give them that pharmaceutical, and it will be better. But we're in like a little grayer here. These are all still viable. These aren't just pseudosciences anymore. Now, on the other side, alternative medicine, especially in the United States, takes a very different approach. They completely get conventional. They say it's bad, it's, it's negative, it won't do anything for you. It'll just make you sicker. And they go more towards uh, holistic therapies, energy medicine, nutrition, natural medicine, from Europe and other places, like biological, they used to do some emotional, not really spiritual though. Not many alternative practices, you know, true practitioners do spiritual practices, conscious awareness. And psychology is also on its own. You go to psychologists for that usually. So it's still a very fragmented between the two of them. What we're trying to do is build a whole new integrative model. It incorporates everything. We want everyone at the table. I want to be inclusive. I don't want to point a finger and say, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. That's not the way to do medicine. That's not what Einstein would have done in his unified theory. He wouldn't even dismiss quantum mechanics because he didn't understand it. But many quantum physicists to this day said that was kind of his problem. If he embraced that a little bit and understood it somewhat, maybe he would have found that unified theory. So what we're looking at here is really all these things, comprehensive, holistic, embracing, unified, and you can go down this, and this goes on and on. This list can go all the way down. And this includes, of course, everything you know, you can go by your data, all types of different dietary you know, um, restrictions and, and uh, plants. And these are just some of them. But what we're trying to say is, in order to look at a patient and treat them with a personalized approach, you also need all the tools available because everyone is so unique. Where someone may need one, you know, little therapy from Europe, another may need just the over a and another may need some very, very advanced one to get them to the place back to health. Then finally came the what? And this was the company that I started. I finally ended up, okay, that, that all sounds good. Now let's start a company. Let's get excited about this. And we had we went back and forth. Me, my co-founder, my father was also an investor, medical director at the time. Uh, and we said, innovative medicine. But what, is, what does that mean? You know, it's not just innovation in medicine. So we started to plot this out as really being referred to as the practical application of new five theory of medicine, which we just spoke about a little bit. But further down is the intelligent and systematic combination of qualitatively effective medicines and therapies administered to patients in a scientifically personalized manner that leads to quantifiably successful results. It's a little bit long, but it is a very complete analysis of what we're trying to do. We're trying to take the best of everything out there and scientifically and qualitatively <coughs> apply that to the patient in a personalized way that produces qualitative success repeated over and over and over. The model itself for innovative medicine is also all encompassing. This is our vision for, for where we want to see things in the future and how we want to propel it. Um, I know that TQW has a very similar vision of doing these things. Uh, at the top of it, you can see the company itself, innovative medicine, the brain, you could say, at the bottom that establishes these infrastructures. A big one that we're really concentrating right now on is medical centers, centers that actually 
do this. And there is one right now in New York Center for Innovative Medicine in Manhattan, where my father is the medical director, we're expanding right now, that treats patients in these ways. And they come from all over the world, as you saw in the case of the boy, and Penn's case and other cases, it really does produce amazing results. And that's the testament. We don't even like to advertise, market ourselves as this you know, cure-all or anything. We just care about the results. That's what we want to do. We're not against any other form, we're not against conventional this or that. We are ourselves and we produce great results. So we're hoping to foster next generation of doctors that way, uh, treat more patients with more centers. Another one that we want to do is a charitable organization. I think this is a, you know, critical for building a, an awareness, and it's where TQIW is right now. Building awareness, letting more people like you know that these things exist. Also, you could fund treatments. Right now, in the United States, insurance will not cover most of this. So we're going to get a little sensible. We don't want to limit this to a higher economic standard of, of, you know, of people that live in that realm. We want to make this available to as many people as possible. I think through charity, and you'll see also, if you knew how much a day or two costs in a hospital, a whole treatment program that would heal that person in one of these centers would be much less. You just don't usually see that because insurance takes it. The people pay insurance premiums go up. Everyone has to pay for it. These aren't free. A single diagnostic exam that may show you nothing that may come inconclusive, may be more expensive than a whole treatment program at the center. But we do want to provide as much funding for people that cannot afford it right now without insurance and educate the public. So this is still in its infancy stage of uh, running. We want to build an educational institute. We do have some classes right now, seminars that we do across the country, um, to inform more doctors of all these options. Because these, these are very viable things. And right now in the United States, you do have this separatist where I do this, I do hormone replacement therapy, I do this. We want to try to bring it together. We want to try to say, okay, you can still do that, but why don't you come together with the other doctors and build a real center that's comprehensive, that's best for the patient. If the patient doesn't call for hormone replacement therapy, what will you do? Say, go try someone else? No, you should be able to say, but in this center, we have all these other doctors that can help you. You don't have to leave. You don't have to feel frustrated just because I, myself, in a specialty, can't help you. So we want to advise curriculums and educate as many doctors as possible so that they can then treat as many patients as possible. And finally, there is this region. We, you know, part of this is the remedies, the herbs, the homeopathics. We want to be able to provide that to the doctors as simply as possible and find the highest quality ones so you don't have to deal with thousands and thousands of different ones. You do have so much on the market today. But as you'll learn, if you are coming tomorrow with a lab instrument with different quantum principles, you can actually test the quality. You can test things that are energetic quality. Everyone says they have high quality. It's a marketing pitch. You've all heard it. But how do you believe that? How do you know you don't go in the production facility and never open those doors? Where do they source it? Do they source it from a poor place that just cuts it up and dries and leaves it there? Or do they hand pick it and actually put it in? It makes all the difference in the world with those types of medicines. So we want to be able to distribute those high quality medicines to the doctors as simply as possible so they can get into the hands of the patients. So this is all part of this. The opportunities that now exist in medicine that are completely innovative. Now one final thing I want to talk to you about about that drop of blood that I told you earlier, that, that futuristic example at the beginning of the picture of this. Um, and I told you it's happening right now, and it's happening through a system that we call bioresonance analysis and health, one that my father created over many, many years. Um, and it's really, it's, it's at its simplest core to tell you, it's an advanced and comprehensive medical system that allows practitioners to do two things, two very important things. Number one, successfully and accurately evaluate all aspects of a patient's health. And this is, you know, very critical because again, we're getting to the root causes of everything here. We're not so, uh, we're not looking at all the diagnosis or the end symptoms. That's, that's the end game, basically. What is causing that symptom is much more important. 
And that's why we're looking at the biochemical, psychological, mental, emotional, even spiritual parameters that are completely undetectable by any other being. And then through identifying them, you see exactly where the patient stands. You see, okay, you have hypertension, but you don't you have hypertension because of stress and because of infection. And you have hypertension because of something completely different. You can it genetically, it's a past life. There's so many different ways you could have hypertension. You can't just say, oh, I have hypertension, everyone will only have hypertension. That just doesn't work. So this first part is, is critical in getting the, the truthful picture of the patient you're working with. The second part, which most doctors are much more excited about, is how to personalize the treatment. Because that's always the hardest part. How do I know which medicine might be best? How do I know how many, how, what the frequency of IV treatments I need? How do I know these things? Usually you say, I usually do three or four, and it looks like for you maybe five or six, but you have no clue really. You have to listen to the intelligence of the body. That only happens through a quantum approach. And when you're able to create a truly tailored, unique program of treatment, we're talking about down to the dosage of something, the time they should take it, the frequency of that thing. This, this is a game changer in my mind because it, it, it really allows you to say, you are the patient and this is your roadmap. We're going to get you from zero to healthy very quickly. And there will be no guessing in this. You won't have to wait to get healthy. And we're going to be very, very specific about this. And we're going to reduce all side effects. We're going to reduce any kind of uh, complications you may have and do it in the best way for you. So yeah, what does this mean? This innovation, this BDH, all this innovative events, what does this mean to you? What does this mean to us? Well, number one, the big thing is no more guessing. I mean, that's, that's a huge, huge uh, part of it. You can have two doctors standing next to each other looking at the two same charts, and one says, I think we should put them on this one thing. I think we should go this way. Maybe they went to a seminar last week and they want to try to check out a new treatment they heard about. But they're guessing, they have no clue, really. It's an educated guess, it's a smart guess, but it's still a guess that you don't know because everyone's so unique. So when you have certainty in each treatment, it really changes the game. The next is we do move from a Newtonian paradigm, which is over 300 years old, which looks at us as machines, to a quantum, which incorporates the body, mind, spirit. We are all connected. We are energy flowing. So it really embraces this new science that allows us to do all these things like personalization and communication. Also, like I just said, unifying medicine. There's no one right medicine. There's no panacea in this world. I don't like the word cure because it kind of says, well, this is the one answer for every person in the world. There's no one answer that will cure everything in the world like that. Also, a big one is lowering costs. When you know exactly what to do, you don't have to do a number of different lab results and they can be inconclusive and wait four or six weeks and we're going more lab results. When you get to the point you can do this in one day and get it back to the patient, you really lower the cost of everything and you focus on prevention. You can focus on pre-cancer cells that would never be tested before biochemically. You could focus on someone coming in for wellness and saying, you're a little prone to heart disease. We know that runs in your family. Let's give you a personalized program that will ensure you have the healthiest heart so you don't get it. I've seen where a whole family comes in with diabetes and there's that one person that comes into the center and says so also, you know, very prone, but it does this sort of treatment, it does something that, that takes some proactive steps and they don't. The rest of the family, all of it. And it's almost like, why does that person have it? Most say, oh, it's luck, it's genes, it's this. No, that's not true. If you can pinpoint the way to try and prevent this, you can really stop it from ever happening. And then finally, like I said, that word cure. There is no word cure, right? Uh, I don't want to go as far as saying that this is the answer to everything. You know, if you're a stage four cancer and then it's, it's metastasized all over, there's not much you can do. So, you know, we have to be uh, reasonable in saying something curable. But we do now have the opportunity to provide and restore health to those that had no options in the conventional realm. Those that were written off. Those that were told, 
I'm sorry, there's nothing else we can do for you. Well, there is. When you know about this, and go there, and we see this all the time where someone's 20 years down the line of the chronic disease ability, and hasn't been to work in forever, feels down and out and just dejected. And then they say, my last resort, I'll do this crazy alternative integrative thing, fine, show up and kind of be skeptical about it, but they don't approve it. Tell you a very high percentage of the time, if they're wanting, open, and willing to do it, they'll get better. They will get better. So, some of the next steps you can take right now in this room. You know, we can always go to Innovative Medicine to look at our newsletters there, things from other doctors, all the blogs, the videos. But even more important is to support the cause, support PQI, support other organizations that are bringing, that are putting a spotlight on this. Uh, this is still very fresh and very new, but we are the pioneers. And as a pioneer, it's almost our responsibility to share this with the world, to try and talk about it, to be passionate, to support it, to tell other people about it, and do what we can, because this is really a critical time. Like I said, we're at a crossroads, and, and our next choices, we have to choose them very wisely. If we continue down the path, you saw what can happen. Unsustainable, basically, disease, growth, unsustainable economical growth. So this is a very critical time. And I think what we're starting here in this room is a great step to taking the right path. With that, I thank you very much.